Welcome, folks. This is a House Corrections and Institutions uh, meeting to continue our work on the racial equity language for Department of Corrections. Um, we had a small working group of four of us working on language yesterday morning, late morning, early afternoon uh, with Becky. And the draft of that language has just been posted to our committee webpage. And it is the second of the two documents that are listed that we will be going over. Um, and having said that, I think probably the best thing to do is post it, is uh, bring it up on our Zoom screen. And then Becky can start walking us through. <clears throat> the um, unedited draft, it had not been proofread uh, yesterday because we didn't finish it until about the middle of the afternoon. Um, and it just got proofread this morning. So Becky had sent out to the advocates, everyone who had testified to our committee, and I had sent it out the draft that we had the unedited draft. Um, at that point, we sent that out late yesterday afternoon and early evening. So all the folks who have testified before us uh, do have a copy of this and we're invited to uh, attend today. So we have with us Heather Simons from DOC. And if the other folks uh, come into the waiting room, Phil will let you in, those who testified to us last week and Tuesday. So any questions from the committee members? If not, I'll turn it over to Becky to start walking us through this. Um, and this is something that the four of us, Marsha, Butch, <clears throat> Terry, myself worked on yesterday to incorporate all the thoughts uh, that committee members had as well as uh, the two other documents <clears throat> that we were working on. And we worked <clears throat> to streamline it and condense it as well. Um, so I will turn it over to Becky. Okay, uh, Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council. Um, so this is version three. Um, it's dated September 9th of the uh, racial equity proposal. Um, section one is titled um, Department of Corrections, Racial Equity and Bias. So that was uh, the and bias was added into the title um, uh, plan and report. Um, Subsection A is the findings. Um, so there are some new, the findings have been changed around a little bit from what the version you saw um, the other day. Uh, so the first findings, finding is that um, in subdivision one, the state's Department of Corrections is a department within the Agency of Human Services. And then it states the purpose of the department in Title 28 of developing and administering a re rehabilitative correctional program designed in part to uh, render treatment to offenders with the goal of achieving their successful return and participation as citizens of the state and community, and also to foster their human dignity. Um, subdivision two um, states that DOC does not serve in a law enforcement capacity, but does play an important role in implementing the quality of an individual sentence and ability for a successful return to and participation in the community. So that finding was sort of a combination of uh, two other findings that were in the previous draft. Um, and then the last one is a new one, um, subdivision three um, states the department's role is to also provide security and ensure racial and social equity to employees and to individuals under the custody of the commissioner. Any questions? Okay, so we can continue. Uh, subsection B is the intent section. So there's um, there are three stated intents here. The first is to address uh, systemic racism, bias, and diversity and inclusion to achieve equity for employees of the Department of Corrections and offenders under the custody of commissioner. Um, and I believe one of the points I wanted to raise here was um, whether this needed to be reworded uh, with respect to the uh, including the, the term diversity and inclusion. 
um, because I think that is more specific to the employee context at DOC rather than um, the, the offenders and the correctional program. So um, I just wanted to highlight that of perhaps that's an area that needs a little more work. Um, subdivision two is to recruit, train, and retain a diverse and high quality workforce in the department. And then finally, three is to enhance a human services approach to the state correctional program that will require DOC to undertake a thorough review and revision of its policies, administrative directives, and interim procedures and memos. Questions? Yeah, I, 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 have, I have a question. Um, the number one uh, of subsection B, to address systemic racism um, bias, does that assume that, or what, what is meant by systemic racism and does that assume that it exists? What, what exactly is that? Um, I think, and, I think it not, is. One yeah. more, and I'm not sure what address means. I mean, if they're addressing it, are they investigating it or are they trying to correct it or what? So I think that goes to see where the, the way of addressing it is developing a strategy and long-term plan. Um, and I think there is, uh, I guess, an assumption of systemic racism. Um, and that is, I, I mean, I think that the testimony that speaks to the testimony that was heard the other day about um, just the, the system, the correction system and areas where um, there, I mean, I think that, that you heard testimony on that in both from both the uh, perspective of the employees of the department, as well as um, the folks who are in, in the incarcerative setting, as well as um, outside of the incarcerative setting. So the, the two people we heard from? Is what... um, I think, I believe the committee heard more testimony than that. Uh, but yes, yeah, yeah. I think that was all part of that testimony. We've heard from DOC and we've heard from all the, from the advocates too. And all folks have said that. Said that there is a systemic racism within DOC? Okay. That they're, they're trying to change the culture. It's all about the culture. Okay. So this is when Becky was emailing me while we were on the floor yesterday, trying to, she brought this issue up. If, a, if B1 should just pertain to the employees or also to the offenders. Um, and I emailed her back and said, well, there's issues offender to offender as well as offender to staff and staff to offender. <clears throat> so I said, why don't we bring this before the committee and let the committee figure it out? So that's a flag that we need to resolve. Right, and I think um, the diversity and inclusion is with respect to DOC's employment practices um, and, and wouldn't, and I, I don't know, I, I guess I would, I would hope to have an advocate or an expert speak on how that might apply to um, the offenders that are under the custody of the commissioner. Because I do think that that is a term of art um, with respect to employment practices. I think it's pretty clear in terms of staffing, but it's the offender piece for the diversity and inclusion. Uh, Butch? Yeah, I agree, Alice. <clears throat> That's a good, great point because the DOC doesn't have much control over diversity and inclusion on their, <clears throat> on their, uh, the inmates coming or the, the uh, offenders coming to them. <clears throat> so that's a little uh, uh, squirrely right there. And maybe we can fix that without having another intent, maybe just take this language and massage it a little bit to have a tent. But to, to, to Kurt's question too, I, I think because we're in, <laughs> I think because we're in intent language, I think you have to, we have to take the, the bill as a whole. And I think uh, uh, once we get into, as, as Becky mentioned, once we get down into the plan and the scope of the plan, I think the uh, uh, 
what we're looking for about uh, the racism piece will become more clear. Um, and I do, okay. yeah, and I and I and I and I, I I do think that the commissioner actually talked about uh, racism in his testimony to us. So we don't know, and we don't know what we don't know, but hopefully after this is over with, we'll know something. So I know Heather is with us. Did you have something, Sarah? Did I yeah. see your hand? It's just really quick. I, I think I think in um, B1, the it either needs to be there are two ideas in there. Um, I think that it's it would be most simply put to address systemic racism and bias um, in the within the Department of Corrections. Um, period. And then the diversity and inclusion, that's language that we often see in a lot of this, these conversations around racial and social justice, but I don't think it's appropriate in this bullet point um, for the reasons that many of you have already pointed out. Um, I think the diversity and inclusion has to do with recruit, like recruitment and training. Um, that, that's that's the way I, I think that bullet one could just be a little bit sim, could be simplified because it's confusing right now. What do you mean by diversity inclusion of inmates? I mean that's that's a bizarre concept. So I I know Heather is with us. Do you want to weigh in on this at all, or is what Sarah is suggesting makes sense? Uh, yes, please, and good morning, everyone. Heather Simons from Corrections. So I, in, just informally with regards to the intent, I wouldn't rule out diversity and inclusion with the offender population under facilities really what were their communities in and of themselves. And um, there are, you know, there are ways for us to think differently about the fact that this is where folks live um, and they reside in different units. Um, we're recognizing diversity as part of the makeup of the, dem you know, the demographic inside, not to mention, um, and I know this gets a little tricky in terms of the measurables, but inclusion oftentimes is, it's a, it's a feeling, right? So if there, I, I wouldn't, I don't think it's as far-fetched as maybe it feels like right now to, to keep the language. Um, but again, I don't, um, I'm not super. I'm not super committed to it in terms of uh, folks having a different way to outline it. But I, again, I, I don't. I didn't find it too much of a stretch, to be honest. If that's helpful. Too much of a stretch to also include offenders mm -hmm. in that diversity and inclusion, because you're coming, saying that they live within their own within a community, when they are. Um, incarcerated, they're living in their particular unit. That's and, right. So, and, oh, I'm sorry. And no, go ahead. Um, no, go ahead. I, I think if there are, you know, if, if it's a question of what does that mean in terms of what we do and how will we know if we're getting it right or changing it, um, uh, we can measure, we can measure diversity and inclusion um, when we get into the business of uh, data. Um, and best practices with how what with how we supervise inside, and I'm not. This doesn't need to just apply uh, to the facilities, but I think that's sort of the easiest way to imagine it. Um, I'm brainstorming a little bit right now because I didn't take notes on this section. But if we looked at um, activities like visiting and um, the, community, uh, the community members and family members um, and how they outreach to uh, their loved ones who are incarcerated. What does that look like at, in terms of how we uh, support those families um, past things like our constituency services office? Um, uh, Kids Apart programs that uh, recognize that um, children are as impacted by incarcerated parents as the parents are themselves. So I think I, I think um, I don't find the language locking us in in any in any way. I, I understand that it might be a little bit too loose, but having not articulated it perfectly, I'm 
pretty comfortable with it. So Sarah, you kind of froze on the screen. <laughs> am, am I unfrozen now? Yes. Okay. Did you have your hand up? I did. I just, I'm wondering if Becky, I, I, I don't disagree with what Heather is saying. I think it might make for, set, for purposes of clarity, it might make sense to add a third, um, is it a third, how many intent, or, or a, an additional fourth piece? Because I think it's, it's a little confusing when it's combined the way it is currently worded. Um, and Becky is a terrific writer, <laughs> so she might have some thoughts on that. But um, either that or um, that it could be included um, yeah, so one idea is that in the plan, in the next section, um, in subsection C, it simply says, I think as you noted, um, Representative Coffey, that it just kind of ends at in the Department of Corrections. So it says, she'll develop a strategy and long-term plan to address systemic racism, bias, and diversity inclusion in the Department of Corrections. So that um, one idea is, could be to just... Um, to just uh, have that mirror what is in the plan section and just say to address systemic racism, bias, and diversity and inclusion in the Department of Corrections. Or the other thing I was thinking about is to address systemic racism, bias, and diversity and inclusion in the operation within the operations of the Department of Corrections because then that gets into what Heather was just saying, because there's a lot of like visitation or grievance procedure or whatever. <laughs> does that make sense, Heather? It does. And I honestly, I think language that, um, that uh, messages to Uh, um, the people that we serve who are serving sentences that we're paying attention to that goes a long way as well. The, the spirit, the spirit of this. So instead of saying to achieve equity for employees of the department and offenders under the custody of correct of the commissioner, we delete that. And then it would read to address systemic racism, bias and diversity and inclusion within the operations of the Department of Corrections. Does that encompass what we're looking for? I think so. Carl? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think this is, this is about people and the, the bullet point that we've got right now in B1 to achieve equity for employees of the Department of Corrections and offenders, and that's what we're looking to do. I, I and I'm, I also think Sarah's, I, the the diversity and inclusion part of that, I think, kind of muddies the waters. I mean, this is about systemic racism and bias, and 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 I think taking those two pieces out, the diversity and inclusion, I mean, those are those are those are. The, you know, a lack of diversity and a lack of inclusion is a result of systemic race and racism and bias. So in, in my mind, that's kind of says that already. If we're, if we're addressing systemic racism and bias, then we're addressing the issues of diversity and inclusion at the same time. So I, I think taking those two pieces out would make that a more clear um, sentence. And I think also it, 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 Keeps, it, it really highlights that it's about people. If we say it's about operations, then I, I, don't, I, don't, not, I don't like that so much. Just my two so, cents. Yeah. So the other option is that we keep the language as is in line 18, 19, and 20, where we highlight the equity for employees and offenders under the custody of the commissioner and delete the word diversity and inclusion. So it would read to address systemic racism and bias to achieve equity for employees of the Department of Corrections and offenders under the custody of the commissioner. You keep both the employees and the offenders. So we're really clear that we're looking at addressing the systemic racism and bias 
within those two entities. So that's the, uh, another version. Carl? I, I think if, if, if we keep that, if we keep diversity and inclusion in there, we should say to achieve equity, diversity and inclusion. But having it on having those on the same lines as I mean, those, the, the goal is diversity and inclusion and getting rid of systemic racism. So it should be down with the achievements if we're going to keep those two parts down with achieve. Right. But I think the discussion was to take out the diversity and inclusion, to take out those words. I think that makes it clearer. And I think it, it you know, I mean, for the for the purposes of um, I think it's really important that, that this be very, very clear. Oh, there goes uh -huh. the clock's going off here. Um, I think taking them out makes it clear. It's the outcome is diversity and inclusion, but we're not, it's not what we're addressing. We're addressing systemic racism and bias. And the plan, if you go to the next page on line six, talks about the plan is to, to develop a strategy and a long-term plan to address the systemic racism, bias, and diversity and inclusion. So this is the other way of approaching B1, that we take out the words diversity and inclusion and leave it the rest as is. Uh, so it would be uh, I have a Carl, quick, oh, Kurt. Kurt. Um, I mean, Kurt, nothing gotcha, changes. Yeah. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Uh, well, the title of this whole section is Racial Equity and Bias. So it seems to me that what we're addressing is racial equity and bias. So for the intent, I would say it's to address racial equity and bias. So put racial equity instead of systemic racism? Yeah. Or Sarah? Or change the title of the section. That's what I was going to say, or change. I, I really do think that it, we are talking about addressing systemic racism, and maybe that's the, a better title for the section. Other folks? Or at least adding it. I would almost rather just add it instead. I'm, I, I'm just thinking how folks who are in the trenches will look at this and feel that we're accusing them of systemic racism. And I don't think we are, but that I'm just thinking of the morale of the staff in DOC at this point, particularly with COVID and the overtime that putting systemic racism in the title might be a flag for them and they might really feel that we're attacking them because they're feeling so vulnerable at this point. I agree that's... completely. <laughs> but my, my, that's why my concern is I, uh, with B1. And then that, I agree. I mean, and we also, I mean, they're saying they have the most diverse labor force in the state and here we are occurring them of accusing them of systemic racism but i mean i don't know see my problem is i don't i don't have enough information there's too many too many things that i would before i before i uh say that we're dealing with systemic ra racism i'd like to have more proof that it exists so that we could say i mean i know i gather it does and i suspect it does but i i haven't looked at enough like we haven't looked at the grievances to see how many of them have to do with racism. We haven't talked to the Human Rights Commission. We haven't uh, done a bunch of things, which to me would reinforce the idea that there is indeed systemic uh, racism. So, Butch, you had your hand up or not? Yeah, I did, Alice. Okay. Um, we were yesterday uh, when we were talking about this, uh, we were very, very careful about how we use the term systemic racism. So, and I agree with you, Alice, having that as a title is, is inflammatory. 
but if we don't say systemic risk, uh, racism, and I, Kurt, I, I understand what you're driving at, and it's a, it's a, it's a deep dive, that's for sure. Uh, but we've had enough folks tell us that there is racism within DOC, and not just advocates, but actually uh, people, uh, people in positions of uh, authority have said that. Uh, so I, I think we want to. I think we should. Uh, call it what it is and, and not beat around the bush. Remembering this is a short term request uh, with limited uh, information being gleaned so that we can move forward in January. Uh, yeah, we'll do the deeper dive in January. We're not doing a deep dive right now. We're just setting the, the groundwork. We're setting the table right now. Yeah, we're setting the table. And Heather, do you want to weigh in at all? You're not, I'm not asking you to unless you want to. Again, I think um, with regards to um, systemic racism or structural racism, um, we're not accusing people of it. It is what it is. It is embedded in a society. It's embedded in organizations or it's embedded in institutions and becomes part of the practices. Um, I very much appreciate any sentiment around um, messaging to our workforce that they are racist or um, that's, that's much different. I think it sort of goes without saying at this point that, that the incarcerative experience in and of itself is based on a rich history of bias period, whether it has to do with color or not. Um, I think the writings on the wall in terms of um, our needs organizationally and nationally to address um, the imbalance of power, whether it's staff to staff or staff and offenders. And I really appreciate the time that the committee's taking with the language. Um, and I'm thinking this through in terms of um, your points around what, you know, what do we say to the staff? And if we look at it in terms of like, a tra you know, uh, if we were training, we're identifying that there is a problem and that is systemic racism, bias, um, that the activity is to address systemic racism. Um, I, if there's uh, that the need to make distinctions between the offender population and the workforce um, and using phrases like op, you know, oper uh, DOC operations uh, one area that we can always go to in terms of, again, the spirit is that restorative practices, if they're done right, should be bias-free. Restorative practices should facilitate successful re-entry and be inclusive. And uh, having a diverse workforce is our goal, acknowledging that we, um, um, what our demographic is in terms of uh, brown and black employees and the fact that our department seems to have more than other departments. Those are just the, those are the facts. And part of our marketing and recruitment efforts around this, this whole plan should be around be us getting comfortable with acknowledging what the reality is. Um, if we're doing our job as leaders, then our workforce should understand that we are supporting them. And this is part of doing that. Although it does co legitimately causes fear. I know that doesn't help with the language, but I really do think that um, we're almost there. Here, I mean, this, is, this is really good. So, where are we folks? We have three things working here. <clears throat> Kurt put out that if we're using systemic racism in line 18, we should also include it in the title. And there's pluses and minuses to that. There's also been the discussion of just taking out in line 18 diversity and inclusion and keep the rest of the language as it is. It addresses both employees and offenders. And then the third option is that you rewrite number one so that it reads to address systemic racism and bias within the operations of the Department of Corrections. 
And we'll draw back to that one. It doesn't really deal with the people. It deals with the operations. I, I have a question then. Yep. Uh, yeah, oh, I guess it would really help if I understood what is meant by systemic racism. I mean, are we saying that the structure of DOC it is somehow racist or, are, or what is structural racism? Or are we saying that the people within DOC, offenders, staff, everybody are uh, racist or exhibiting racial bias? What exactly does systemic racism mean? Anyone want to weigh in on that? I think I asked that of one of our of uh, one of our uh, witnesses, and she said that we should that I should look into ask somebody else for a clear definition of that. And I did some Google searching trying to figure out what exactly the definition of systemic racism. I couldn't come up with a good answer. Madam Chair, uh, Sarah. So, um, Kurt, I, I just I hear your struggle with this concept. Um, however, I, I, I got to say, between the RDAP report from December first um, to the testimony with Justice Reinvestment to hearing, like I think I think back to what the Commissioner Baker um, said when we were dealing with this issue specifically, um, and. I think we're not talking about, you know, we're talking about a system and kind of adjusting and retraining um, all of our, our thinking around uh, assist uh, around systems. So, so when you say systems, Sarah, you're not referring to the DOC system. You're referring to our system as a culture, as people. It is. I mean, that's, I, and I think culture, you know, if we're going to get philosophical about it. I mean, it's it's about our society and culture, but there are systems and DOC, our corrections system is a system within our society. So I think what I'm hearing from Heather is that this is a welcome invitation to look at like how we, um, to look at our, the, our training and looking at policies and asking DOC to come back with a plan that address, addresses um, systemic racism. And, you know, I think, I, under, I, I appreciate what people are saying that, you know, I don't want to get people on the defensive about, about this because I don't think we're, with this language, it's not my intent to accuse people of being racist. I think what we've heard is that having a system and having a work environment um, that is um, aware of bias and can address its own bias and retraining people through professional development and education is better for the people who work there and the better for the people who are within the care of corrections. So um, I, I don't want to ha get anybody's backup, but I also don't wanna be indirect about it either. So however, how we can strike a balance and as a committee um, so that we're clear and also that it's, this is not, it, to be clear that this is also not an attack. Um, this is about supporting our Department of Corrections. So when you when you say that the in this case system or systemic racism means that there is a racism within the system of our hiring of our promotions of our dealing with the people within? No. no it's our society. Of, it's our society. What and our what, culture. What parts of it's society? Not systems. It's not systems in terms of how you think of how operations are running. Is systemic racism within our culture that that's the process of people thinking or how they view other folks? So and we're addressing cultural. Yeah, I think what's confusing here is that you think of the corrections system and that same word is being used um, with systemic racism, but systemic racism isn't just about corrections, it's about sort of every facet of society. It's schools, it's workplaces. I mean, it's, it's just every so aspect what, of society. It's the legislative branch, it's the executive yeah. branch. It's, it's, yeah, so it's, um, I think what may be confusing in the language for you is that that's a term that is, is used to address sort of racism 
in society, whereas we are talking specifically here, um, this language is focused on the correction system, but it's not, it's not um, sort of like a personalized, <laughs> or it's not just uh, a term being used just for the correction system. It's, it's sort of recognizing and acknowledging that this is everywhere in society. But the language that we happen to be dealing with is, is specific to the corrections program and DOC. I, I think I understand, but the trouble is that when when people say systemic racism, what we're trying to do is deal with that and or correct it or address it, and then we have to get down to specifics. So if there is, so we can say yes, there probably there is systemic racism within society. It's a cultural thing. So okay, we want to deal with that. We want to address something specific. So then we're saying. Is there racism in this particular portion of the system? Is there racism in the directives, in the hiring practices, in the whatever parts of the system? In order, when you when you keep it so general as just address systemic relate racism, it makes it so general so that we don't we're not able to address it because we never get very specific on what has to be done. Is my problem, but but so I think I, that's that. But that's the where we're at right now with this language, because if you look at the plan, that's where <clears throat> the Department of Corrections is going to develop a strategy and a long term plan on how to address the systemic racism, bias, diversity and inclusion. And then we lay out what the scope and evaluation is of that for them to come back to us mm. in January so we can do a deeper dive then to how do you really address the systemic racism. This is okay. just as Butch said to set the table. It's not to do the deep dive and and okay. define everything. Does that make sense to the committee, uh, Carl? Yeah. I I just wanted to add for Kurt's benefit because this is a cultural issue. The place to deal with it is with people. So it's in training. It's in recruitment. It's in hiring. It's in supervision. It's in um, you know, ongoing uh, continuing education. Those those are the places that we address it, and we also address it through um, policy. So I think we and I think we've got that covered here. Um, but I I don't have any question that it's there, and I think that Sarah, both Sarah and Becky, did an excellent job of explaining what systemic racism is. So can we make a decision about B one so we can move on? <laughs> I like your second. I like your second decision of taking diversity and inclusion out. That's my opinion. And keeping the rest in. Where are the other folks on this? I saw Sarah nod. I would make one Charles match. The I'd make one match the title of the section one way or another. Do people think we should do that? Terry says no. Marcia says no. Mm -hmm. No. Mary says no. I think people are kind of saying keep it racial equity and bias as the title. Sorry, Kurt. That's all right. <laughs> okay, anything else? So in B1, all we're doing is keeping the current language and taking out the diversity and inclusion. And then Becky's going to wordsmith between racism and bias, you got to put an and in there, I think. Okay. And then the rest of the intent section is okay. Let's move on to the plan, Becky. Um, so subsection C um, sets out uh, the plan that the commissioner is tasked to develop. Um, so it's a strategy and long-term plan to address systemic racism, bias, and diversity and inclusion in the Department of Corrections. Um, subdivision one lays out the scope of the plan, which, is, which includes um, the department's employment practices and supervision of persons under the custody of the commissioner, both in state facilities and in the field. So this is trying to focus in on what, what this long-term 
uh, plan is going to be looking at, and it's sort of both of those pieces. Um, and uh, so the, quick, quick question is, is uh, in the field something that enough people understand what that means? As opposed to in community or something like that? Maybe a, a question for Heather. I think that's the term that's used within DOC. Yes. It's so it's easy for us to understand, but if, if I under, further understand the question, I'm not sure about everybody else. Community and field, I think, can be interchangeable. You, uh, the, I think the word field was used because it's field offices. That's mm -hmm. the term for your PMP offices. That's where I think it came from. Yeah, to make sure that we're just not looking at the incarcerate the folks who are incarcerated, but those folks who are under the jurisdiction of our field offices. Yes. Alice. Yeah. So I I I agree. I, I think we should change that in the field to in the community, uh, because we know that it's, it's kind of a term of art for us. But somebody else that doesn't know what in the field is could misinterpret that. Could it be, oh, sorry. Okay, so the thinking is to change word field to community. Other folks, Sarah? I like that idea, uh, maybe un or under community supervision. Is that what we're, that's what we're talking about, right? Well, so it says supervision of persons under the custody of the commissioner, both in state facilities and in the community. Yeah, I, I think that's a good change, if that makes sense to Heather. Um, yes, if it's useful, you could add services, community services. I would keep it just community. I think that the public sees it as people are under the custody of corrections and they're in the community. It's not so much services that folks are looking at, is my thinking. So where are we as a committee? Change field to community and just leave it at community and not do community services? Mary, yes. are you okay? I, I like just community. Okay. Same here. Okay, so we're gonna change field to the community. Evaluation. Okay. Uh, so the, the evaluation in subdivision two, line 11, um, so the plan shall include a timeline and process for evaluating the following. Um, first, it's uh, the department hiring practices, training, supervision, professional development, and competency standards to inform the basis of performance evaluation and the promotion of employees. Second, identification of the resources and funding needed to complete the plan, including upgraded technology, consultant support, and required data. And third is um, a list of stakeholders and a process for how the department will engage with the department employees, individuals under the custody of the commissioner and the broader community. Um, so I just wanted to point out on line 19 that I think there may need to be some word change here because um, the lead in language for the subdivision is evaluating and subdivision C speaks to a list of stakeholders. So I think, I don't know that they would be evaluating the list of stakeholders, but um, I just wanted to point that out if that is something that needs to be changed. Hmm. Would you then just do, I see what you're saying there, Becky. I had the same question about B. We're not evaluating the identification or actually identifying So I think we can just say the plan shall include a timeline and process for With the following for the following and take out evaluating. And I think that that might. Yeah. yeah. Or put evaluating at the beginning of A. Right. Evaluate the department's hiring practices. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. Um, or other folks who said, um, Oh, that, that was me. I was just uh, thinking we might have to then put um, in front of the others, like in B, identifying the resources and identifying a list of stakeholders. Yeah. Are people comfortable making all those changes? 
just language clarification, how it flows structurally, doesn't change the intent. People are okay. So are folks still reading the evaluation piece? Are we okay with this piece? Two, A, B, and C? This is what they're gonna come back to us in January? Yes. I think it, the thing that was removed, I think was good. It was, I think you removed some, a few things and made this section clearer. Carl, you're okay with it? And then we have Mary, Felicia and Linda. I think in rereading it a couple of times, I think I'm okay with it. I'm really not okay with this entire bill. So you all work it through, but as it stands right now, this isn't the, for me, isn't the way to go. Yeah, you wanted more of a complete audit, right, Linda? Well, it's not so much a complete, well, I thought that would, it wasn't so much the audit. First, it was the putting together the plan with DOC to have them understand what's needed when they are eventually auditing. So, but that wasn't my main concern. My main concern was the process and what's coming in here is a little bit too theological for me. And I think that we're not the appropriate people. The way it's being structured right now is not something that I could go with. I'm having problems with definitions, legal definitions, and I'm having problems with a lot of the words that are being used. So I can't really work on this format. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other folks? Could I could I ask Linda Joy then with somewhat using this language or saying no, you couldn't use any of this language, how would you look to fix it? I know you had had some language and a proposal that you were thinking, but how in looking at what we're presently dealing with, is there a way to fix the language as to how you're thinking? Well, for me, just if I had to work off of this, the only part that I would be able to survive with right now in this short period of time with the committee participants who are trying to put their hands on it would be that um, DOC will give us a plan of what they intend to do. And then we will review that and work with them going forward. I mean, that's the extent of where I could go. I don't think they should be doing a self-evaluation. I don't think we should be putting in terms in here that have very ambiguous definitions that can be um, taken by various advocates and stakeholders in the wrong way in various areas. And I think that you're not gonna just change a culture by telling someone you need to change a culture. So I think we need to look at data and I think that's what DOC probably and most intelligently is going to do anyway, is look at their data. I think if we gave them more of a structure on how to look at the data, they would be more accomplished in providing successfully what they can actually achieve or can't achieve. And it's okay if you can't achieve something. But I don't think just coming up with vague definitions to get something out there is the way to go. Well, but that's just my opinion. You're a whole committee as well, and I'm part of it. It's just my opinion. So I applaud everybody's efforts. I just, you know, it's just the way I think mm -hmm. in this particular area. I think it's dangerous. Okay. I think we all appreciate that. Um, 
I, I go back to what Butch was saying. It's sort of just laying the table for us to do the deeper work with more, uh, more testimony, more access once January comes around. I, do I, have I would, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Linda. Uh, Linda and then her. Yeah. And so to that, I, that's where I was saying, okay, you can stay with just, you know, the evaluation. They're going to have a plan, a timeline, what they're going to do. They're going to let us know what they're going to do. They're going to list the stakeholders and give us a report. And that's where you, you, the start should begin and end until it comes back to us. And then help them get as much professional help and guidance or money or whatever they need to accomplish what the outcome is after we see how they are going to assess their various areas because they know best what to look at and then they need guidance from there. And that's my opinion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Kurt? Um, well, one thing um, Representative mentioned that I was wondering about is when this plan is submitted, is this something that we approve or not? Or is this no. they submit a plan no. and we say, okay, that sounds good, go ahead? No. Okay. The thinking is that they will come back with recommendations. And some of the recommendations they can do internally, and some may need legislative change, statute change. Okay. Alice, may I say Yep. Um, I, I appreciate what Linda Joy is saying, actually. Um, and uh, I think I, uh, I, I had some trouble um, with some of the language in like the under the findings, uh, the, the second and third paragraph. I felt it was a little, um, I understand the, in, the intention of putting it in there, but I felt like it was a bit superfluous to what we're trying to do. And um, and I think that the, the idea where I, where I think I might have a different way of looking at this than Linda Joy is that I think having um, specific things that we want to see in this plan and identifying them, I think is, is helpful uh, to, in clarifying what we're asking DOC to do. Um, we do have, I didn't see this as a self-evaluation. Um, I see this as um, a way to look at how they're going to develop um, recruitment training um, practices uh, um, and that, that, that they need to identify, you know, what kind of technology, data, research, cons outside consultants um, to do this work. And, uh, and, how, and we heard loud and clear how, we, how people wanna be engaged in that process, both employees and um, people who are, um, families who are impacted and individuals who are impacted. So I guess it's a long-winded way of saying that, you know, would, I don't know how others feel about simplifying the findings section. Um, what I'm hearing is people are feeling that some of the language is imprecise or subjective or, you know, I'm not sure, but I like the first, I really like the first, the first um, uh, under uh, section one in the findings, the first thing, it's really, to me, it's all there. It's really clear what DOC does. I think in the other parts of the finding, it, it was an attempt to incorporate testimony that we heard both from DOC and the advocates. Um, I remember <clears throat> Heather saying pretty clearly that DOC's <clears throat> There's an important role that DOC plays in implementing the quality of a person's sentence and the ability to re-enter. And I think we wanted to encompass that thinking in the findings as well as we heard testimony that there's a feeling there that the culture of DOC could be um, security and coming from law enforcement because a lot of folks do come up through the ranks of law enforcement and military. So then they carry that into um, the correctional system. So I think part of the thinking was to really make clear that DOC is under the Agency of Human Services and not under the Agency of Department of Public Safety or law enforcement agency like it is in other states. 
and other states DOC is under law enforcement. But here in Vermont, we have a conscientious effort that DOC is not under law enforcement. It's under the Agency of Human Services. So that was the thinking around the second finding. The third finding, um, it's just the statement of <clears throat> making sure that when a person's under the custody of the commissioner, that it's their role to provide security and to ensure racial and social equity, just to be real clear about that in the findings. So that was the thinking behind putting in the findings. And I don't know if the committee wants to change that or I'm here, I'm seeing that people want to keep it the way it is before us. Yep, I have a comment then. I, I, I think the findings are, are okay. I, I do have one other thing that will back to the evaluations portion that if we're kind of changing A, B, and C, I don't think that should be titled evaluation in two because we're no That's longer. For right. Yeah. That's where I look to our drafts folks for that. But that whole thing needs to be kind of rearranged. Okay. Well, if, if I'm taking out the evaluation language um, at the start, then I can, I can um, rework that. that okay. Right. That's a drafting. That's how you work at a drafting. Okay. So A, a B, and C would actually be subsections of scope. She'll figure that one out, Kurt. <laughs> that's, okay. That's Becky's role. So D, the report, basically it's the commissioner comes back, submits a report by January 15th on the strategy and the long-term plan that is described in section small c. And then the timeline for the implementation and that comes back to our committee and Senate committee on judiciary. And that's where we can start doing the work and taking deeper testimony. I, I have a question then for Heather. Mm -hmm. um, is, this, is this something that you see is doable um, in, in terms of the uh, resources that you have and the time that you have and the people you have? Is this, a, are we may, is this too big a request or is it doable? I think it's big and I think it's doable. And that is the reality that, um, that's the, the reality that we live in. And it's such a step in the right direction um, that um, we're just, we're, we will find ways to be resourceful. My focus really on this to the point around the plan, the recommendations, the timeline, and to Representative Sullivan's points around evaluation is that, um, what you're really asking is for a needs assessment. What, what is happening? Um, how are you measuring that? And what is it that you need to move forward, if that makes sense? And so in that regard, I do believe it's doable. And it, and it won't take away from your other resources that, would, that uh, you think would, might be more important. So we're all right with that as well. Good. Okay, is that a question? Is that that's a statement that, or a question? That was kind of that was kind of half <laughs> a question. It was, it was just giving you an opportunity to say something if you wanted, but otherwise, I, I assume that that's the case because you said it's doable. I assume that it's not uh, taking away from other resources that you think are more important. So, okay, that's not a question then. A butch. Alice, just, just kind of comment. Um, we are making some assumptions uh, in this in this uh, piece of legislation, and it's I believe it's it's session law. You know, we're not changing anything in the green books, uh, but we are assuming that there is systemic racism. We have no proof uh, and bias. We're assuming that uh, with what we're saying here. So this is uh, a chance. You know, we may find that there is not systemic. Okay, uh, thanks, Becky. 
uh, we may find that there is, there is not systemic racism. Uh, we may find that there's not bias. It might be implicit bias, but not another form of bias. So I think this, uh, this, this is a two, this, this we're looking at, I think many of us, myself included till about 10 minutes ago, listening to the conversation, we're making some assumptions that we don't know are true. So if we ask for this plan, report, data or whatever, it will either confirm or deny uh, or puts us on a path to confirm or, confirm or deny those assumptions. And, and I think back to the uh, unfortunate event in, in, uh, in, in Newport a couple months ago. Uh, that was the first, and I hate to say this, but I will because I am because that's who I am. It was the first thought out of everybody's mind that, that race, that some sort of racism was involved in that event. I don't know that. I don't know one way or the other. And frankly, and I uh, want to find out. So I think this piece of legislation may put us on the goal, uh, on the path to finding out what is really going on uh, within the Department of Corrections. Uh, that's my soapbox. Yeah, this is this is the very first step to really um, looking into DOC and having them also look in and come back with a plan that if yes, there is racial inequities, social inequities, racial bias, um, and how they can change the culture within DOC. It's not gonna happen overnight on anyone's part, but at least this is a statement that can be put out there to say that not only are we as a legislative branch looking at law enforcement and other entities within the racial bias perspective, but also corrections is a part of that conversation. And it's and the first step of accountability of what's going on. Right. Um, so that that's the goal here. It's not to make those decisions and it's not to say, yes, there is racial bias or, or social inequity. It's to say, let's acknowledge that if it is occurring, then let's put our heads together and put a plan in place to how to resolve it going forward. Well, I, I hate to say it, but then I question B1 on the first page where we're addressing it. God. I think we've made that decision, Kurt. Okay. But I mean, I you're think saying we've two... made that decision because it's addressed in the plan. Yeah, but I understand. But you're, you are saying two conflicting things. I think you're doing too deep a dive on this. I think this is just the first level of looking at it. I think you're getting into the weeds of this and that's not where we are. The weeds will come later. We haven't grown it long enough to have weeds. <laughs> we don't have that many tomatoes yet. <laughs> so we've made some changes to this draft. Um, I don't know where Becky, is. I was, really hoping we could get it voted out today because it's going to have to go to being presented to another committee. Um, and I don't know where we are with this, Becky. What would be the best way? We have until 1030. Um, I can just go over the changes really quick and then I can maybe sign off for a minute. Um, make them if that works for everyone. Why don't you make the change? Because um, unless you... Something. I just want to make sure I have all of them. Okay. So in okay. B in B one, um, I am deleting diversity and inclusion. Um, in C, I am uh, sorry. C one, I am replacing field with community. And in C two, I am reworking it um, to to remove evaluating and um, and changing the lead in language for all of the um, subdivisions there, as well as the uh, 
title of that subdivision. Mm -hmm. Is that is that the changes that I'm making? Okay. Alice, are we, Alice, on page two, line seven, were we going to put in operations of the Department of Corrections? Um, I thought the committee had decided not to do that because it oh, was okay. about we, we, it was about the the people and not the operations. But okay, that's fine. I just okay. written it down. I hadn't yeah. passed it off yet. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, so um, if it's okay, I might just sign off of uh, Zoom for a moment and come back on. Okay. With those changes. Okay. Yeah, that works. There is. Can, can I just make yep, one hurt. more try at this? In in B one, if we changed address to investigate. To me, that would make a big difference. Kurt, say that. Kurt, if we changed, instead of to in address systemic rate, uh, racism, we, we said to investigate systemic racism. It One says we're already blaming them and we got to investigate them. Excuse me? Then we're saying we're already blaming them because we're investigating. If we're addressing it, then we're looking at it. I saw it just the opposite. If we're saying we're addressing it, then we are assuming it exists. If we investigate, we're trying to find out if it exists and how much and how badly. So why, why don't we noodle this one a little bit? Let, okay. Let's, I think investigating is you may have some trigger words that they're going to do a deep investigation. I don't know. Let's let's let um, let's noodle this. Let's have Becky sign off, do the language change. Let us take a break, um, like we normally would in a committee room, just to get up and stretch our legs. And um, let's come back in like ten minutes or so. Does that work for folks? Okay, great. Will you pause this? Do we keep this? What are the logistics of that? I Do would just block it? yourself out. Great. Okay. Just, just this okay. video. Just stop your video. Let Phil figure it out. So Maybe do you then. want to? So do you want us to call back in or, or zoom back in? Get off and then. I would back not in? zoom back in. If you're on a phone, you might want to call back in. Mary, but if zooming, we just can block our video. We're just in a break. Right. Okay, not a problem. Yeah, whatever works for you. But zooming, you can just block yourself. Yeah. Break. yeah. Here. Is that showing up for everyone? Yes, it is. I just like being in our room so much better. I miss our little room. I was, imp I was impressed, Alice. Our, uh... When we looked at the space study, yeah, our we were it was confirmed our room is the smallest room in the in the building. Yeah, that surprises. <laughs> I thought we were the same size as um, education across yeah. the way yeah. in general upstairs, yeah. and um, I was surprised. Yeah, they're already they're they're all up to four people. We're down, you know, we're, we're standing alone at three. <laughs> Maybe we have bigger people. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. <laughs> Maybe it's that seven foot. Maybe we're just bigger people. <laughs> you know, one big difference that was well, no. seven feet circle, I think, makes more sense than a six foot circle because you do have to take into consideration your body and your shoulders. Sure, sure. It's you know, so you do have to take. You don't think about that, but you have yeah. to take that in consideration. Yeah. Not I'm just the headshot. Yeah, unless you yeah. face to face with somebody, you know, if you're face to face with somebody out in a sidewalk is a little different than if you're standing side by side. And I, I find that a little bit I've been going to the local diner or whatever, people forget that if you're face to face, they're pretty good about six feet, but not back to back or yeah. side to side. Uh, yeah. They, they 
I find it, people are pretty conscientious about face to face, but other yeah. directions, they just, just people aren't, we're not wired to think that way. No, we're not. And it's just a real adjustment on how we function. Yeah. yeah. So are we all back here? I don't have the full screen because I have the language up before me. Yes, we are. Okay. Just hit participants and you'll see it. Yeah. Yeah, but then it blocks everything out. I can't see. I, I can't see the um, document. Has that been posted to our website, our web page? Yep. This, it has this it's particular. There. That may be the best way for me to look at it. Actually, what's up on your screen has not yet been posted, but Becky will explain a very minor change, and then I'm going to post it as soon as uh, the meeting is over. Okay. Okay. I just had a big truck go by. We got some paving going on somewhere up the road. Okay, let's come back together. I think we're all here. Um, and I'll turn it over. I'll turn it over to Becky here. We'll go through. Heather's back with us. Okay. Um, Becky Wasserman, Legislative Council. So I've, I've made a few uh, changes to the draft based on the committee's comments. Um, and this is version four. Um, so I will just go through quickly where there are changes from the previous draft. Um, so looking in subsection um, A, subdivision A3 on line 15, um, this is a change I just made throughout the document because I noticed there was an inconsistency. I, I changed all the references to those who are under the custody of the commissioner to persons under the custody of the commissioner because I noticed that um, it was referred to differently in the draft. So um, that's just like a, a global change I've made. Um, in some cases, it was individuals under the custody or offenders under the custody. So um, throughout, I've made this change to persons under the custody. Um, subsection, oh, sorry, are there any questions about that? Okay. Um, subsection B, in subdivision one on line 18, I removed diversity and inclusion. So um, the intent here is to, to address systemic racism and bias and that um, diversity and inclusion has been struck out. Uh, uh, I have a, a question, question comment on that. I'm wondering whether the um, after bias whether that should be the, that sh that uh, to achieve equity for him should be a, s a separate item. In other words, number two. I, I so think we, I think we leave it to our drafts person to well, do some of this. I mean, what yep. you I mean, what you're thinking <laughs> she there? Just, she just did it. <laughs> I'm uh, because uh, it's two different things to address or what I would say research actually, system, yeah. systemic racism and bias, and then two, to achieve equity for employees. Well, I think that there are different types of equity. So this draft right. seems to be, um, I mean, I, of course we can, the committee can choose to address whatever um, types of equity, but oh, in this okay. draft no. it's, it's focused on racial equity and bias. So. I see what you mean. Um, then, then uh, basis to achieve racial inequity, ra racial and so whatever the other word was, equity. It just the, to achieve equity doesn't sound right there, because we are trying to achieve racial and social equity. Uh, I, I can I can add in racial and social equity um, just to, to clarify that further. Why don't you do that, Becky? And I gather nobody likes the idea of changing address to something like research systemic racism. 
I'm not picking up a whole lot of support for that, Kurt. <laughs> Sorry. I would leave it addressed. That's what I'm picking up from committee members here. So Becky, you just changed that to address systemic racism and bias to achieve racial and social equity for employees and persons under the custody of the commissioner. So I'm just gonna note to Phil not to post uh, what I just sent you. So I'll, I'll send, resend this to you. Okay. Um, the next change is in um, C1 on the next page on line 10. Um, I struck out uh, the word field and replaced it with community. Mm -hmm. um, so it is uh, the scope is looking at um, the supervision of uh, persons under the custody of the commissioner, both in state facilities and in the community. And then um, sort of in general with subsex, su subsection C, I uh, reorganized it a little because I removed um, the uh, evaluating in subdivision two. Um, and I just, I just removed the, um, the reader assistance titles in subdivision one and two. So I took out scope and I took out plan. Um, and so subdivision one uh, doesn't have scope anymore as a reader assistance title. It just says the scope of the plan shall address the department's employment practices and supervision of persons under the custody of the commissioner, both in state facilities and in the community. And then subdivision two, there's also um, no reader assistance there. And um, it just says the plan shall include a timeline and process for evaluating, sorry, process for the following, I removed evaluating. And then in the subdivisions I've added, um, subdivision A is evaluating the department hiring practices. Subdivision B is identifying, oh, I think I need to take that up here, identifying the resources and funding needed to complete the plan. And then subdivision C is identifying a list of stakeholders. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't change any of the intent. It just lays it out differently in terms of flowing with the language. Right. And those were the only changes on this draft. We kept the report the same. Mm -hmm. No changes to subsection D. Okay. So on page two under C, I think you were talked about changing the the words of individuals to persons, and it looks like it still it needs to be changed to persons under the custody of the yes, commission. Thank you. Good catch. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else from the committee? Do I dare ask? Do I dare ask? Now, yeah, Butch? I just got to think about this just for a few seconds. Okay. Okay, seconds up. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Marsh. <laughs> um, in my, I don't know if it's concern, uh, just maybe a question to the committee is, uh, under the scope, uh, we're, we're looking at employment practices and supervisions of persons uh, in the timeline, resources, stakeholders, that's fine. We heard, we haven't talked about, uh, and maybe we don't need to, uh, inmate on inmate uh, or we're, we're, we're assuming that it's all, I'm sorry, Alice. No, no. We're, we're assuming that it's all 
uh, employee on inmate or employee to employee. We haven't talked about inmate to inmate. Um, do we need to, or will that uh, automatically flow out of the plan? Well, if you do anything with inmate on inmate, it would you don't have to have a separate section that deals specifically with state yeah. facilities because you yeah. don't have that in a community. Number one, the plan would the scope of the plan would address the department's employment practices. I hate to bring this up to the twelfth hour, but it's just something that just popped up. But we did, we are thinking about that back in the intent language on number one. That's what we are thinking on number one. I'm fine if everybody else is fine. I, I'm okay. I just was, it was just a question and a random thought. Well, you. You could say employment practices, supervision, and interactions of persons under the custody. Maybe, but you know, I could be a bridge too far here too. I'm willing to accept that. So the plan would develop a strategy and long-term plan to address systemic racism, bias, and diversity and inclusion in the Department of Corrections. And that's, that's great, but then we get into the scope. And right. This is so, this, this, right. By naming the scope stuff in the scope, do we limit it to that? I mean, that is one part of the picture is inmate behavior towards other inmates. Can we, uh, Can we just add a sentence there to the scope of the plan? I don't know. I don't want to blow the whole thing up. I don't either. Where, what are the other committee members thinking here? Is there a is there a problem with adding and interactions so? mm -hmm. though? Well, I'm gonna reach out to Heather. Is Heather on here still? I hate to put you in the spotlight here. Um, but we did, we have spoken about inmate on inmate behavior. And that is part of our intent language as well. Yes, so um, I, I don't think it's problematic at the 11th hour. I also don't think that, um, that there needs to be any language added. If we are addressing the Department of Corrections operations and best practices, it, that would include how we see the functioning of the department and the facilities as a community, which would mean any work we do around social and racial equity, um, whether it's new or additional, would be in education, in due process, classification, housing, that is the business of corrections. I do understand what um, the concerns are in, in in terms of the need to say inmate on inmate, but inmate on inmate, we're talking about behavior. So pretty much everything we do does um, does center around inmate behavior. So if we're doing if we're doing what we need to do, it would be embedded in everything else. From my perspective, I don't think we need additional language. Well, Heather, you don't think that the language we put in, the directive we're putting in under the scope limits you to those uh, specific things. You think it'll naturally flow into inmate on inmate and inmate on, on staff? Yes. Okay. Because it's dealing with supervision of persons under the custody of the commissioner? Yes, I think it's supervision. I think that um, Anytime you refer to um, uh, corrections and 
and um, operations. That's really what it, that, that encompasses all of it anyway. I also think that if there are specific areas, areas that we identify between now and January, those will get flushed out. I'm standing down, Alice. Okay. I think that's a good thought, Heather. Thank you. I'm not seeing or hearing any pushback from you standing down. I think, Heather, we are concerned. I just want to voice this. So we are concerned about inmate on inmate behavior. Right. Um, so, for example, and uh, all of the race data mm -hmm. that we collect is going to give us some indication about what that behavior is, right? So, if there are um, disciplinary reports. Um, <clears throat> any kind of sanctions or accountability, or if there's distinctions between uh, classification status, that it's gonna be much more easily measured. And it'll be able, we'll be able to identify what we mean when we say inmate on inmate behavior. So are we comfortable with where, what the language says now? Which did back down? Okay. Well, I, I didn't back down, but I accepted. You accepted, <laughs> I, I accepted Heather's explanation. <laughs> Backing down, Alice, is not my style. <laughs> no, it's not. No, sorry. I hate to ask this, but anything else before we get ready to take a vote here? I'm not seeing anything or hearing anything. So I would entertain, what draft number are we under here? Five? Four. Well, there's some changes. Oh. This is still draft four. Um, so I can, I can send it to Phil as draft four um, since it's just replacing uh, since we made some changes while, while this has been up and I think he's just going to replace what was posted. Yeah. So it's still draft four, but it's only- I, I can change it to draft five if you'd like. Whatever works for drafting for you folks. I think draft four is, okay. would work. Okay. So I would entertain a, mo a motion to, um, support the language in draft four with the so goal. moved so moved seconded okay it's been moved and seconded we approved the language in draft four with the uh, um thinking that this would be submitted to another committee either government operations or house judiciary to be added on to either s119 or s124 that hasn't been decided yet. So it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? If not, Sarah, please call the roll. Hey, Representative Taylor. Yes. Representative Sullivan. No. Representative Morrissey. Yes. Representative Martell. Yes. Representative Leffler. Yes. Representative Krewinski. Absent. Um, Representative Demro. Yes. Representative Coffey. Yes. Representative McCaig. Yes. Representative Shaw. Yes. Representative Emmons. Yes. Okay, so that's nine one one. Nine one one. Good job. Thank you all. Good thing. Good thing this isn't tomorrow. Why? To come out with a vote nine one one. Oh God! Is tomorrow the eleventh? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, Alice, Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, what is the process? What do you want me to do with this action form? Should I send it to Phil? How do we, it's a diff, slightly different. 
uh, what I would do is just send it to Phil <clears throat> at this point, and then we'll have a clean. <laughs> I think you froze. You froze up. Oh, I did. Yeah. Now we can hear you. I froze. <laughs> Am I You're still twanging. frozen? You're twinging. <laughs> So you froze when you said we'll have a clean ver <laughs> version. Yeah. Okay. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll send this to Phil. Yeah, send it to Phil. And then when we have a clean version, I'll have some conversations to see which bill to place it on, either S-119 or S-124. I'm not breaking up anymore, am I? No, we can hear you now. Okay. Because I'm not sure. I know that they're hoping next week to get those one or two of those bills out. Uh, that's beyond my pay grade. Um, so I'll just see where it ends up going. But at least, at least we got it done. And then the rest is up to other folks. Delbox is still taking testimony on 124. Yeah, and I think judiciary is on 119 still, isn't it? Uh, let me look. Let me look. 119 is the use of force, right? And 124 is the training council, yeah. right? 124 is the, yeah, the whole redo of all, all police training in Vermont, yeah. I have a keen interest in mm -hmm. because of the academy. Yeah. Uh, and then 119 uh, is the use of force. 119, law enforcement. It's 1030 tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I, 1230 today. Yeah. So I'll connect with those respective chairs and find out where it's the best place and timing for this to go. And hopefully those committees will, whatever committee, whatever bill was goes on in that particular committee, hopefully they'll accept the language. That's the next step. Alice, a funky question. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm looking through this and I'm, I mean, 119, they're making huge changes to the Senate version and I know 124 they are. I'm wondering, will if they don't pass it out of, out of their committees in the next couple of days, which one is more likely to make it to our floor? No. I don't know. Whichever one is more likely is probably where our language will show up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious if, if S-124 is gonna make it to the floor. And S-124 is the one with the training? The training, a uh, big, big swing in training and other activities uh, within uh, law enforcement, yeah. And that's up in GovOps, correct? That's in, that's in GovOps, yeah. And 119 is the use of force in law enforcement, and that's in judiciary. I think that might stand a better chance. But... Okay. See, those are conversations that are beyond us. It's yeah, I know. Yeah. And we may have a better direction tomorrow after yeah. those committees have had some testimony. So at this yeah. point, for us, our work is complete. Yay. Unless you change your mind. No, I'm not going to change my mind. Unless something else comes up that I don't anticipate. But um, so for tomorrow's morning's meeting, we don't do not need to meet. And we were scheduled for two mornings next week. And at this point, I do not see a need to meet next week. Um, that could all change in the last minute. But um, at this point, I do not see us needing to meet for the remainder of this. And that will free you up, Phil, because you're still working with House Ed. Yes. So that will free you up. So our work for the committee is complete. Feels good, doesn't it? God, everybody looks so exhausted. Absolutely. <laughs> We're only going to see each other in a few hours on the floor. That's different because you don't see each other close. I know. I know. But I want to thank you all for the work that you've done, um, not only just in the past few days in this little special session, which has been very different for all of us, but also the work that we did starting in January 
and then how things really changed in March. And we, we as a committee really have done some really good work um, and have come out with real solid legislation and good votes that I think really plays, that really goes well for our whole legislature. And I wanna thank each and every one of you individually for all that you've contributed. Sometimes it's frustrating, we understand that. <laughs> <laughs> but we're a good team and we're a good committee. And I want you all to remember that and that we do respect each other as individuals and as legislators. And that's really important. And we have and a good thank leader. You. Thank you, thank you, Alice. Thank and you, thank you to Becky for putting up with us for the past week. <laughs> yeah, my, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, on that it note, was kind of, it was for Becky, it was like taking all of us to kindergarten class. Yes, yes it was. <laughs> and poor Heather had to sit through this. <laughs> and thank you, Heather, for all your work. Not too. at all. Yes, and congratulations on your new position moving forward. And thank um, you. And thank you to the committee and to you for supporting a position and all your thoughtfulness on this work. This is um, this is a very big deal to us. And for some of us who've been in for a long time, um, a big wish that we've had. So it's an extraordinarily meaningful and not without a lot of folks behind me and with me uh, with a, an enormous amount of gratitude to you and the committee. Well, thank you again, I appreciate including us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Boy, January seems so long ago, doesn't it? <laughs> and where we are now. In some ways, yeah. Yeah. So thank you all. We're going to sign off of YouTube here. And I want to thank folks who have been listening in and following our work. And we appreciate everyone. And um, we'll see you come January. <laughs>